And that's when I slap the table. I need sweet potato. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Reefers? I know usually you guys come to this channel for reef-related stuff, but today we're gonna talk about my planted axolotl tank. So it has been a hot minute. It has been at least half a year, if not more, since I've really given an update on this tank. And a lot of you guys have been asking about this tank, so here it is. This is a 40-gallon breeder tank with two axolotl, and the unique thing is that this is a planted aquarium as well. Usually people keep axolotl with just like a bear tank with bare bottom, but I thought, okay, you know what? I have a little bit of like aquarium experience and let's try to push it a little bit. So for the last two and a half years, I have been using planted aquarium substrates in axolotl tank with a variety of degrees of quote unquote success, which I'm gonna share with you guys today. Now there are a couple things I wanna cover, including first talk about the livestock, which is axolotl and the fish and the snail. Number two, we're gonna talk about plants. There are a lot of different plants in this tank. We got stem plants, we got floating plants, we got terrestrial plants, and then we actually got fruit plants. It's actually a sweet potato back there, and this is actually V2. I'll share with you my experience using sweet potato as a freshwater plant. And then lastly, I'm gonna share how is the substrate treating me in terms of an axolotl tank and whether I would use a substrate again. Obviously, somebody is excited about this video, so let's <laughs> jump into it. And we got an audience today. Wow, right, right, right. So you may hear like some random screaming. I apologize in advance. All right, so here are the main residents of this tank. You're in cool. Small potato. There's uh, Silong Loi, the big potato. So for a small potato, you really prefer like this part of the tank, which is with actually inside this uh, tree trunk right here. It's pretty interesting. It's hollowed out and it kind of leads to the back and he just loved the space. And sometimes you catch him in the back as well. For her though, she is all over the tank. Usually like she's up front right here or sometimes she's in the back right behind the branch as well. Uh, when the light is on, they're a little bit shy. As you know, like Eslado don't really like light unless they're really hungry, then they come out right up front and center. In terms of feeding the girls, I feed them every other day. Um, in terms of food, let me show you guys what I've been feeding. I've been feeding this guy right here. Moist sinking bits. This is like 3 16 of, of an inch. There are a couple different types of axolotl food on Amazon, but they, I feel like they're all similar. I was using a salmon feet before, and to be honest, they all look the same, just really soft pellets. Normally, I actually have a bowl that sits right here in this corner. I actually washed it yesterday because I was doing a full tank cleanup. I would have the bowl here, and then I will just dump the pellets right in there, and the axolotls, as soon as they smell the pellets enter the water, they'll just kind of beeline to Towards it and start eating it. This actually segued really good to this substrate. Now one big question I get often and one big question that I set out to solve is whether these kind of substrate is safe for axolotl. Okay so I know that I do not want a bare bottom tank because I feel like it seems kind of stressful to axolotl number one and number two I want something that looks a little bit more natural. Uh, so between substrate I was debating between sand or something a little different. Now sand is innate. Uh, it's, it's a great substrate for axolotl. There's fine, the particle is fine enough that it won't impact the uh, intestine. Anything they eat, they can pass through gracefully. However, problem with sand is that some of the plants I want to try, they're stem plants, which draw nutrient with the roots. So I would love to have a substrate that has some nutritional value or can hold some kind of uh, nutrient uh, if I use root tap. Thus, I'm going with these kind of plant substrate. Now, plant substrate, I look a little bit deeper into it. Number one, I want to make sure the particle size is small enough that uh, even if the axolotl accidentally ingests the substrate, they won't have any impact the intestines. That's number one. And number two, I want to make sure that the substrate does not release any fertilizer or chemical because axolotl is uh, pretty sensitive to those kind of stuff. And ADA soil, while they're fantastic for plant tank, unfortunately release a decent amount of ammonia initially. So that's, uh, that's a no-go. And that's why uh, we ended up with contra soil. This is a contra soil powder form. Uh, they are fine enough that even if the axolotl kind of stir it up, it settled back down pretty quickly. However, the only thing I'm not counting on is actually them in disintegrating over time, like back there. And I think it's also because of that, you see a layer of almost like detritus that's like covering leaves and branches and stuff like that. But with substrate out of the way, the axolotls themselves have absolutely grown. Look at this. They're almost, well, I wouldn't say the size of my forearm, but they are definitely almost 
two palm size. Uh, and I've had them about two and a half, almost three years at this point. Uh, they're really, really good health. Eating well, pretty friendly. At least this one is pretty friendly. That one's a little bit more reclusive, but that one really comes out as soon as the light is off. Especially when they're hungry, they're like right up front and center begging for food. Besides the axolotls, we do have one fish. I'm not sure if you guys can see him right there. He is a white clout minnows, and he has been living with these axolotls for almost a year at this point. Every couple months, at least before the um, pandemic hit, I would swing by a, lo a local fish store and then buy a small group of white cloud minnows to add to this tank. I feel like it's kind of like enrichment slash food for the axolotl. In terms of fish, white cloud minnows is as perfect as they get uh, in terms of quote unquote disposable tank bait. Uh, disposable because axolotl usually will catch them and will eat them. But they are good because they do prefer colder water just like the axolotl as well. And also the other parts is that they do not contain any really hard stiff fins. Uh, uh, the rays. So when uh, the axolotl actually catches one, they don't have as much of a risk of uh, choking on the fish versus any other fish. The other point that makes the white cloud minnow great tank mate is actually um, that they do not actually pick on the axolotl's gills, which is a big thing because a lot of fish like uh, maybe guppies and other small fish, they like to pick on those gills because look at this. There's a lot of uh, fluffy filaments there and fish, some, well, a lot of fish like picking on them. I'm gonna ask Emily to hold the camera again because I really want to show you the growth uh, in a more macro sense, meaning that Emily, can you back up a little bit? No. Back up a little bit, back up a little no. bit. Let's show the scale. In terms of like terrestrial plants, um, there are two that stood out. One is a pothos. Pothos are these ones right here, these broad leaf ones. These are the ones I'm sure you've seen before. Um, they're like everywhere basically. So I started I started out growing these thinking these will uptake the excess nutrient from the axolotl and as well as the fish. And they've been doing a pretty good job, pretty good job. And after that, I started adding floating plants and then they did an even better job, right? It started out competing the pothos and I still got some of the floating plants right here, like this right here. I think that's water sprites. I also have like red root floaters and a lot of different ones I've tried. There's not a lot of floating plants left. And that's the reason, that reason is because like I actually got some of the duck wheat um, kind of like mixed in and I really want to get the duck meat out so I just started like pulling out floating plants but that's just part of the reason. The other reason is also that the floating plants were kind of getting out competed by one other plant and that is the sweet potato. So that particular one is actually a Japanese sweet potato. Before this one I try a regular sweet potato. So the result is pretty similar between the sweet potato and the Japanese sweet potatoes. They're both impressive and they- You know why? Why yes. is that? They are all potatoes. They're all potatoes. <laughs> like you <a> small potato. <laughs> so basically small potato, big potato, same thing because they're all potatoes, right? <laughs> I mounted the potato using three toothpicks. I'm gonna show you in a little bit. I mount it, I soak it halfway in the water for about two, three weeks, it does nothing. And then on the fourth or fifth week, it sprouted one or two leaves and then roots start coming out and it just exploded. This right here is roughly two months worth of growth. That's it, just two months. You look at this, you think it'd be a lot, but no, just two months worth. And uh, as you can see, vines everywhere, like when it doesn't reach anything, it just kind of like wrap around itself and try to create a structure like this. And up there, you'll see that it's actually going up the hang uh, the light the hanger for the lights and once it reach the top nowhere else to go comes right back down like this it's just ridiculous however one thing i noticed is that it does not seem to know how to kind of like regulate the nutrient uptake meaning that it'll tick and tick and tick and now it's trying to sustain so many leaves so much growth it could not anymore so you notice some of the leaves are actually slowly turning yellow, it's fading versus it's like a nice rich green like the porfos before. From V1, the first sweet potato, what happened is that eventually it outgrew um, the nutrient it has from the axolotl tank and the plant just withered away. And when that happens, I guess like the potato itself got soft too and axolotl started eating into it, which is ridiculous. Uh, at that point, I just tossed it out. When the potato left, it really created an imbalance, imbalance for the axolotl tank. Algae started coming out because porfo got out competed. This is not enough to handle the nutrient load. Once a tossed potato, floating plants is gone. Nothing else competes with the algae, so algae took over. And that's when I slapped the table. I need sweet potato. So we added a sweet potato back and sure enough, algae disappeared from the tank. Everything's back in balance. And now this is kind of like a nonstop seesaw. 
Right now, the tank is super, super clean. Um, all the nutrient got uptake by the potato. But right now, it seems like the potato is kind of out, outpacing the tank nutrient level. So this time around, I'm gonna doze a little bit of flourish. I'm nervous about dosing any kind of fertilizer into the tank simply because I know Exilado is really sensitive towards uh, fertilizer or any type of chemical in inside of water. So I'm going light, we can go a little bit first. Exilado seems perfectly fine at the moment, but again, we're going slow. You're trying to kill them? No, I'm not trying to kill them. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to report back, but check this out. How cool are uh, sweet potato? One dollar plants, well, one dollar food item from the supermarket. And it turns out to be one of my favorite freshwater plants. Right? <laughs> right. You know that Anson didn't say that, right? Huh? <laughs> oh. Well, that's not the same Albert Einstein you're thinking about. That Albert, Ar that which Albert one, Einstein. Which one are you talking about? That Albert Einstein lives in <laughs> Minneapolis. So you guys had a good look of the sweet potato. Next thing I want to talk about is actually the porphos. Porphos is actually the first house plants I tried. I tried porphos in a beta tank. Uh, beta actually is like a little fish bowl. It worked out perfectly, so I thought, hey, why not? I'll use porphos to kind of pull out the excess nutrient from the actual oil tank. It has been working really well um, until I find the sweet potato plant, which totally, totally beat the porphos hands down in terms of nutrient exports. If your goal is nutrient exports, at the moment, from what I've experienced, nothing quite beat a sweet potato, which is crazy. And one thing I did not show you um, a little bit earlier is actually the root structure of the sweet potato plant. We'll take a look with the porphos as well. Sweet potato plants, right there. That's the chunky sweet potato right there. I had. Like I mentioned, I got three toothpicks, uh, kind of like suspending it on this contraption. And this contraption is actually a filter sock holder for a reef tank. So I have maybe like the bottom half of the sweet potato submerged in water. And in the span of a couple weeks, as you can see right here, the root just kind of came out, started going nuts, taking over the tank and soaking up all the excess nutrients. Now these thicker roots, these are from pole fields, and these are from like three years worth of growth. And these are chunky, chunky roots. I used to have a aqua clear 50. I started with 30, 30 died, and then went to a 50 actually a couple months ago. The 50 also died for whatever reason. So these aqua clear filter isn't actually filtering much water. What I used it for was actually to hold biomedia. So I pulled out all the filter floss and stuff like that in the uh, in the media chamber. I just threw in a chunk of like pond matrix in there and that's all the aqua clear is there for. So seeing how the aqua clear filter just didn't, does not seem to survive in this tank, I just pulled out all the um, pond matrix and kind of keep them in like a mash bag and shove it be to behind the tree branch. But the pole is just kind of like free hanging right there. I actually built this contraption right here. This is, I think it's called lettuce, 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 I don't know. But you know what I mean. But basically I cut down a couple of these uh, bamboo poles I got from hardware store. And I used this uh, twine to tie them together and to form this little ladder that the plants can climb onto. And so far I've trained the porphos to really just wrap around the uh, lettuce. But these are all new growth and it looks like it's escaping this portion. That plant is really interesting as well. It actually died back to no leaves and then after a couple of weeks, boom leaves came out again so it's been in really interesting. I don't have much success with stem plants except for the um, swords, Amazonian swords. See back there there's like, two more. It actually uh, split. Well I got one, it split into two and then that one split into another one. So I've been pretty successful with sword but not much luck with the other stem plants unfortunately. Besides the sword, besides the lotus, another plant that has been doing decently well is actually these Anubius uh, Nanas and Anubius Golden. So that's Golden, these two I believe is uh, Nana. However, these plants have not really grown much. Maybe a couple more leaves, but nothing to write home about. It just did not die, but uh, it's holding steady I'll say. Now earlier, I explained why I went with the planted aquarium substrate. It's because I want to do stem plants. However, after seeing how the axolotl treated the stem plants in this tank, uh, if I were to do it again, to be honest, I would just go sand to be completely honest. That's because I feel like all the plants that I've had success with is pretty hardy. I could have just grown them out of the pot or just kind of tied them to the branch. And then I avoid the, the pain 
of these uh, these material decomposing and kind of depositing all over the all over the tank. And I feel like in this case, I would have just gone sand. Maybe like a dark brown color sand would look just as good as this right here. Planted aquarium substrate, especially the types that is really small that won't lead to like intestinal uh, compaction and especially the type that do not release ammonia, namely the contra soil powder form. It does work with axolotl tank. However, once you're beyond like the first year, year and a half, you start having issue with the substrate breaking down over time and it just leads to a pain. Now it just looks messy. In my experience so far, it has not been harmful at all to the axolotl, but it just make the tank look a lot dirtier or a lot messier. If I were to do it again, I would say it once again, I'll probably just go sand. As to the other plants I've tried, the problem with axolotl is that they do kind of walk around a little bit and they do hunt for food and they do like, whenever they get spooked, they kind of like grab a bunch of sand or substrate and just push themselves. They ended up uprooting most of the plants I planted down. This includes stem plants and then I was also thinking about doing carpeting plants. Now, if I gave the carpeting plants maybe like a couple months in advance to really develop its roots, maybe I'll stand a chance. But just based on how much of the substrate these guys move, I don't know. I honestly don't know. And I just don't feel like it's worth the, um, the pain in the butt to kind of clean all this mess up. I would just go sand, to be honest. All right, guys, with that said, that is a uh, pretty long update, actually, with my planted axolotl tank. This tank has been really, really low maintenance. I do water change maybe every other week. I feed every other day and just like a pretty enjoyable and chill tank. And we'll be like sitting here eating dinner in the living room and then we'll just see the axolotl park right here checking us out. They're actually really personable pets. All right guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed this non-reef update. In terms of reef tanks, a lot of things actually is happening with the 135 and the 17 gallon mangrove tank. I've actually received multiple shipments of livestock for both tanks actually. There's actually a lot of interesting developments and projects along the way. And I can't wait to share it with you guys next week. But I know this video is a departure of my regular reef video, but I hope you guys enjoyed this little break. If you did, be sure to leave a like and I'll see you guys that's Sunday at 12 p.m. Show. Bye. Well, they're technically not corals, but these are.